Uhuru Kenyatta on this very serious issue. Lives are being lost. Being quite the stranger to Kenyans compared to his colleagues, Mohamed Abdul Badida seized the opportunity last night to make sure he registers in the minds and perhaps also in the hearts of Kenyans. If you want to be saved from, from corrupt leaders, you adapt preventive medicine. Principle number one, eat when you feel the pangs of hunger. Number two, when you feel the pangs of hunger, don't fill your belly with food. You eat every gedere and then there is no space for water. You need to give a third water, a third food, and then a third breathing space. Dida's office may be too small for the comfort of many, but he has a larger-than-life attitude. Kenya is too small for me, gentlemen. Kenya is too small, I can man the five continents. And I have the potential and the sincerity. Which is why at 39 years of age, he wants to be Kenya's commander-in-chief. Never mind, he threw his hat in the ring a little too late, according to many. Unajua David, ali hakukua katika ile vita, hiyo historia ya Biblia. Ali kuja muisho na endi ali maliza shida. Ali rusha tumawe moja. I came late, nime kuja muisho na ndarusha tumoja na itakwisha. That's precisely why he is not panicking about the little time remaining, even though he has not been on the campaign trail until now. They program 15 days for my campaign. I'm just waiting, rest, relaxing for five more days, and then the 15 days. I rather this is what I told Tell you, 15 days. Furthermore, his campaigns will not be as grandiose as his colleagues have been. He will hit the road on foot, and when necessary, by car. He hopes to go around the 47 counties before the D-Day. <laughs> He was planning to travel to the northeastern province today. And that's why we didn't get to visit his house. But all the same, he told us about his family. I'm married to, to three wives. And they have uh, 11 children. They all live in Nairobi. The English and religious studies teacher abandoned teaching out of frustration and got into business. And now he believes he can also help other Kenyans if given the top seat. In a night... I traveled from coast to Nairobi, I could make 60,000. And I was in class waiting for 42,000, a frustrated 42,000, where you cannot air your views. Back to his two-roomed office in downtown Nairobi, and rule number one, one must remove their shoes to enter the main office which he shares with his running mate. It's basically for cleanliness sake and also because sometimes he has to pray inside here. I ask him what drives his passion to become Kenya's fourth president. The political class has betrayed us. Corruption has become rampant. And uh, we want a, a representative government where power lies in the common man and the common woman. But knowing that power corrupts and absolute power corrupts absolutely, he defends his desire to be a leader, saying that being a commoner, an ordinary man who has never felt the trappings of power, as his colleagues. He understands better what hurts the common man. I read about Mahatma Gandhi. I read about Jesus. You know, a leader, I, le I read about world leaders. For you to be a leader, you must understand the value of humanity. I looked at these characters who were the best leaders and uh, they were characters who could not sleep until they ensured that everybody was comfortably asleep. Everybody had a place. He promises to be the servant leader that Kenyans have been yearning to have. Sylvia Chebet, Citizen Live at Nine.